from Thruway Lanes in Buffalo, New York. The USA Cable Network presents the Professional Bowlers Tour. Tonight, the $95,000 Buffalo Open. And these are the five finalists you'll be seeing. In fifth place, 33-year-old Art Trask, who's won three tournaments this year. The fourth place finisher, the 1977 PBA Rookie of the Year, Steve Martin. Qualifying third, a three-time tour winner, colorful Guppy Troop. In second place, three-time Player of the Year, Mark Roth. And the man they'll be shooting at, this week's leader, and the winner of this event in 1979, Wayne Webb. The Buffalo Open on the USA Cable Network is brought to you in part by Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. By Mobile One, the oil that saves you gas and more. And by Chevrolet and your local Chevy dealer who invite you to come in and test drive Celebrity, the bright new shape of Chevrolet. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the PBA Summer Tour on the USA Cable Network. I'm Al Troutwig, along with Mike Durbin. And Mike, since we've seen the bowlers last, they've had a couple of weeks to rest the tired muscles and the tired minds, and I think that's going to be an advantage to them, wouldn't you say? Yes, I would, Alan. We've had almost 20 days off, and I know that I used it to great advantage. I spent a week in a row resting my mind and my body. And we've been bowling steady almost since January 1st with hardly a break at all. So a break of this kind gives the bowlers a chance to go home, to get with their families, to rest their minds, to get away from bowling, to be refreshed, to come back starting uh, fresh again. This is a bowling crazy city, Buffalo, New York. We're actually in Cheek Turaga. They'll be packed in here to watch all the bowlers, but the scores have been rather low. Well, the lanes have been as slick as I've seen any, any lanes in quite a while, Alan, and this has kind of held the scores down because if you missed your target at all to the right or left, it didn't hit the 1-3 pocket, and then with the lanes being so slick, it was hard to get the traction on the ball to make it carry the pin. So it only took a 203 average to cash 48th place this week and only 207 to make our top 24 in the finals. Our leaders, though, have been bowling well. They've gotten something on the ball, and I expect to see competitive scores today on the show. The top man is Wayne Webb, and he hasn't won a tournament in 15 months. What do you think's gone wrong for him? Well, I think it's been a combination of things with Wayne. He's made the telecast many, many times, made the championship round several times, had some bad breaks on, on the television show where he left taps when he needed strikes to win. I think the conditions have been hooking more up until this week, and that goes against a, a big hook ball bowler like Wayne Webb. I'm looking for him to uh, repeat this week, and uh, he's my pick to win. Well, Mike Durbin and I will return for the $95,000 Buffalo Open on USA after these messages. Y'all clear? Yeah, let's go. I've pushed a lot of ships around this harbor. Some of them make you feel kind of small. Well, doing it right, that makes you feel kind of good. I haven't lost one yet, and I'm not planning to. But I guess the best feeling is when you finally get them on your own. That's when you realize how thirsty you are and just how good a cold beer is going to taste. That's it, guys. It's Miller time. Miller time. Time to appreciate the difference between a good beer and a great beer. Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, oh we've got the beer. Miller, taste to go to hurry. Miller Highlight, America's quality beer since 1855. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. Of the best-selling motor oils today, 14 now save gas. But only one saves gas. Offers cold weather starting down to 35 degrees below zero. The best protection under extreme heat. And has the ability to take you 25,000 miles between oil changes. Only one. Chevy's out to blow away the confusion about pickups with the new size Chevy S10 with available V6 power the imports don't have. Chevy S10! V6 power to tow twice as much as any foreign import pickup. Carries heavier payloads than many standard full-size pickups. V6 power with gas mileage ratings even the best-selling four-cylinder import when equipped with a five-speed transmission can't beat. 
Chevy S10. It's the hottest selling new truck in America. There's never been a truck like it before. It's time to borrow at the $95,000 Greater Buffalo Open. To the right side, Steve Martin, 23 years old from Kingsport, Tennessee, and he'll be meeting the fifth place finisher here at Buffalo, Art Trask, 33 years old from Fresno, California. And the traditional handshake, Al Troutwig along with Mike Durbin. And setting the stage here at Three Way Lanes Island, uh, they're going to lanes 47 and 8. And from what Steve Martin tells me, 48 hooks, just a little bit more than 47. He's starting on lane 47. Here we go. Steve throws that great big hook and wasn't able to control it that time. The ball going high to the heart of the pins, leaving only the 610. Steve obviously gets many comments about his name. I'm sure he does. And of he, course, he is a little bit of a wild and crazy guy. He has an excellent sense of humor. He has one of those dry senses of humor that just keeps you in stitches. He'll throw hard and straight at this. No turn at all. Covered perfectly. So Steve Martin marks to start things off. And now Art Trask, who has a cashing streak of 11 in a row, Mike Durbin. That means that he's finished in the money, the top 48, usually 11 straight times which is a remarkable achievement on today's PBA tour conditions. Just a great shot to open the match with, Alan. One thing I want to say about Art is that the times that he has made the, the championship round this year, he has gotten out of the gate great with strikes right away. Five step delivery. Notice how straight the swing is. Arm up for balance. Look at that follow through. Look at that great balance he has at the line there. Now, if he keeps holding true to form, he'll open up right with a double right away. He seems to make great shots to open the game. And leaves a solid four. It was a good shot. He was a little short. Didn't quite get it out to his target that he wanted to. He was happy with just the four pin. I would say of the top five, but finished here, he is the most serious of the five. Now, watch the two pin. Second from the head pin here. It'll go to the wall and miss the four pin, and that's how you leave a solid four. Hard and straight at this bar. Not much time. Covers it easily. Strike spare for Art Trask. A bit of a contrast in styles here. Steve Martin is what we call a crank on the tree. He throws a big hook ball, where Trask is more of a line ball bowler. Covering a lot of boards. And when you get that big hook working, that's how it carries. Martin. Steve Martin, another five-step player, very low to the ground. High back swing, look at that power. Now he comes through, watch the turn. See the follow through go left? That's not necessarily recommended for the follow through to go there, but Steve makes it work for him. Steve finished with an average of 210.7. Our Trask with a finishing average of 209.4. Steve can jump on top by 10 pins with a double hit. Gives it more room. And it leaves what we call the PBA warp shot, the 2 8 10. That's the adjustment. He went high the first time and left the 6 10. And this time he leaves the 2 8 10. See the ball sliding here? It's just not biting the lane yet. He gave it more room. Now it'll start to bite. Comes in behind the head pin and leaves the 2, the 8, and the 10. Virtually an impossible spare. He'll throw hard and straight at the 2, 8. Hoping to bounce something out, and it doesn't happen, he's open. Steve Martin leaves the third open, and that is a tough way to start things off. Especially against a opponent like Art Trask. He's been very opportunistic on television. Every time he's gotten an opportunity, he has jumped on it. Except this time, I put the kiss of death on him, didn't I? He gives it right back with a 4-6, just a little soft for that shot. See, it cut right through the heart of the pins here. And when you're hitting in that area, you always look for trouble. And he got it this time, full penalty. The 4 and the 6, he'll throw hard and straight at one of them, hoping to bounce it out. I've been building 30 years and made this once. 
brings things pretty close. Remind me to tell you never to say nice things about me just before I fall, okay? Okay. Did it to both of them, didn't it? wasn't partial. Lincoln, Martin has the lead. Art Trask had the best match record at the end of 24 games. His record was 17-7. and seven. And Steve Martins was real close, 16-7-1. So these guys, as far as winning and losing is concerned, did very, very well. They won a lot of games. That's how they got here at the top five. An actual shot. Howard is what we call a shot maker. He is looking at a target out there, Alan, and he's trying to hit that target. He's not shooting at an area on the lane or anything. He's trying to hit one or two boards out there and making a shot out there. For Steve, it's not that he's not a shot maker. He just covers more boards, and sometimes the way he feels about it gives him more area. Comes in light like that and just gets those pins dancing around. Steve Martin from Kingsport, Tennessee. Here's the replay. You watch the head pin go to the wall. The ball comes in right. It'll deflect. The head pin goes to the wall, comes back, and those pins are just dancing to get down. Now, here's his trouble lane. He's hit 48 twice and hasn't hit the pocket yet on 47. He chose to start on this lane so he could finish on 48. Good shot. And gets the strike. Martin has struck in frames two, four, and five. And so, Steve Martin studies the lanes and will return to continue the opening match of the 1982 Buffalo Open on the USA Cable Network after this. Irish spring. Fresh and clean as a whistle. Because Irish springs, green and white stripes, have two freshening deodorants. Two deodorants for a fresher kind of clean. And a fine fresh scent. So you fresh and clean as a whistle. Irish spring deodorant soap gets you fresh and clean as a whistle. Today, the landscape of investment opportunities spreads far and wide. But there is one place they grow in all varieties to suit every kind of investor. At Merrill Lynch, we've brought together a profusion of financial services to nurture all kinds of investment needs. And it is the skill and care with which we tend them that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed of heart. The USA Cable Network, 24 hours a day of TV programs aimed to bring your family what they want when they want it. All day, Monday through Friday, USA Daytime features a fresh new mix of entertainment, talk, insights, and exercise that can brighten any day at home. Then on USA, primetime means sports time, as we bring you only the best, more live major league sports than anyone. For kids, USA offers Calliope, the best children's film festival on television. And every family's late night rocker will love night flight. Late night, all night, every Friday and Saturday night. On weekends, it's kids time all morning, plus unique features from the English Channel and classics on the USA movie. Throughout the week, programs like U Magazine, Sports Look, Sports Probe, and the Wall Street Journal Late News all add up to a complete cable network that expands your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day. USA. We continue with USA Cable Network's coverage of the PBA Summer Tour, and Art Trask now steps on the approach, trailing by 11 pins. And if I were a betting man right now, Alan, I'd be willing to put some money that Art Trask is going to strike here to get this match back within one pin. He's just a very tremendous competitor and makes shots when he needs to. Let's see. Yeah, he gets it. You don't win 80... You don't win 80,000 by not taking advantage of opportunities. See this shot from behind? Look at how square he is. Now watch the follow-through. You can't do it any better. Now he hits light, which is a high percentage hit on the tour. It'll deflect. But there you get a classic example of the light pins of today going to the wall and doing their damage. You can take the lead by nine with a, a triple here. A little high. And breaks it up. Leading only the 610. Looks at his hand, it's hot out there. He might have lost that one just a little bit and went left to target. Of 
for us. Close, though. He's three pins down. Summertime in Buffalo. Hot and humid. And these lights and the throughway lanes just outside of Buffalo don't help matters any. Well, actually, it's cooler today than it's been all week long. It's been extremely hot all week long, but it's a little bit cooler today, but those lights warm it up. Hard and straight at the 610. Converts it easily. Art Trask, a PBA member for 10 years. He's been here before, and as Mike Durbin has said, he has capitalized on his TV appearances. Now Steve Martin, plus three. There's Kim, who's with child. November is supposed to be the big time. And looking at his wife reminds me that she's instructed me not to call him Stevie, but to call him Steve Martin. So he gets another strike. Taking the lead by 13 pins. See Steve from behind here. High back swing. Watch the power and the quick turn. Ball goes way out to about the seventh board. Now makes a hard charge, and it just holds up and strikes. He thought it might go high. He breathed a little sigh of relief, going to his tough lane over here now. Steve has won five PBA titles, looking to make it six. Quick, short, choppy steps. Perfect shot. Beautiful. And I'll tell you what, here at Thruway Lanes, you could not fit any more people in here than are already in here. They are packed literally to the roof. And Art uh, finds himself in a hole. Down 23 pins, he needs to get striking. And that's how to start. Again, you see the style from Art from behind. Dead square, watch the follow through, on balance. His balance is the best on the tour, I would think. The ball deflects, but just gets the five. See, it just touched that five as it went by. The breeze knocked it over. It's got a double here to cut it down to 13 pins. Went high the last time. Notice how he moves the ball before he starts a controlled swing. Really snapped that through. Perfect shot, all right, he throws the ball so well. Art Trask, who replaced Mike Durbin in the number two spot on the PBA money list. Just nudged you a little bit. He slid on by you. He keeps sliding further ahead every week. Steve Martin on his good lane. Quick steps. Sends it out. Here it comes. Oh, beautiful shot. Alan, this is professional bowling at its best right here. They're making great shots. These lanes are not that easy. Again, you see Steve from behind, the short steps, the high back swing, the follow through goes left and then back to the right. The ball goes out, charging no deflection. Watch it go straight through the pins. Back up by 23, can increase it to 33 with a strike on his difficult lane. Although the last two times he hasn't made it look very difficult. Steve Martin, plus 23. <laughs> Solid tempo. Didn't even nudge it. They were setting up for what could be an excellent fish in a shirt. Steve lets it go. He knows he threw it well. Doesn't strike. And he's unhappy. And that's about as much emotion as we've seen from either one of these bowlers so far. Well, you don't want to get too excited in that first match. You got three more to bowl after this one. Right now, Steve is up by 22 pins, going at a T27 clip. Art Trask is playing 205 right now, but he has the potential of 235 if he can strike here in the ninth and get two in the tenth. He's taking a little extra time here in the ninth. In fact, he's asking for a re-rack. He gets that first one automatic. This, this is a must strike. He has to strike on this ball to keep himself in the match. Oh, it's been having a great year, his best. Just short of $82,000, placing him second, as we've said. He's won th three titles, all three this year. There's the alternate. My doubles partner from the doubles tournament, Showboat Lanes, Gil Slanker. Right there. Beautiful shot. Under pressure, he just relies on his game. His game is so solid, Alan, that when the pressure comes up, he relies on that game. Now, watch this ball. No deflection, straight through, solid in the pocket. It's now 12 pins, he can cut it to two 
with the first strike in the 10th frame. Interesting thing about that alternate is that they never, ever had to use one. Never. never. I've been in that position a few times. It's uh, not a nice seat to be in. Here's Art Trask, minus 12. It's a little high. He turned it early and went high with 3-6. He knew as soon as he let it go. He's not aiming it much out there. One board, if, the, if that. Just didn't quite hit his target the way he wanted to. He's down 14 pins, need to make this spare and strike for 213 and force Steve Martin to mark in the 10th frame. <laughs> Makes the spare easily. A strike here gives him 213 and would force Steve to get eight on his first ball and nine out to be a winner. So Steve Johnson, he's in a, in a good spot. He doesn't even need a mark. He can still win the match, but he can't, uh, can't afford to get lazy either. Oh, and that makes it even worse. 210, seven. Well, our crash finishes with a 210. Steve just needs to avoid disaster here. Says yes, that's right. Well, I think he wants that split cleared off the lane on the left lane there. Yeah, that's exactly right. Sometimes you know, psychologically you're looking at that, you know, it comes into your mind, and that, that's exactly what you leave. Art watching, knowing that uh, his fortunes are not uh, too good. <laughs> that takes a lot of courage to throw it that far out and leave that mark. <laughs> If you've got a ball like that, you know it's coming back. Well, he's bowling with confidence. He certainly is. He's a very loose player, especially for a bowler as young as he is. He's only 23. Yeah, he's a veteran already. He was out here when he was 18. The winner of this goes on to play the character, Guppy Troop. Sends it out again, even wider this time. And leaves the two and the ten. And Steve Martin finishes with a score of... He'll be in the 220s. Oh, sorry, right. Depending on whether he makes this or not. And he gives us a show. Oh. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. 226. Excellent game. There it is, Steve Martin defeating Art Trask by 16 pins. 226 to 210, and he'll move on to face Guppy Troop. A reminder that Chevrolet will award the use of an S10 truck for one year to the bowler who fares the best overall in the 15 PBA tournaments carried by USA Network. Chevrolet S10, there's never been a truck like it before. Stay tuned, we'll move on in our coverage of the $95,000 Buffalo Open after these messages coast to coast. Chevy Chevette, the best-selling small car in America last year? All the standard features? Reclining front seats, AM radio, shift console, light stripe tires, fold-down rear seat, and lots of other things. Is it Chevette's great gas mileage? A big 30 EPA estimated miles per gallon, 42 estimated highway. Could it be Chevette's low price? It's still one of the lowest-priced Ford or hatchbacks sold in America, foreign or domestic. Could it be that Chevy Chevette is America's best small car buy? Years to get friends. <laughs> Guys, just two more floors. You know, we heard apartments were hard to find. But the roof? We have the apartments on the third floor from tonight. Okay. Yeah, well, you guys have been traveling all day, so we thought we'd pull out all the stops. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Here's to your exterior decorator. <laughs> 
Defending champion Jose Luis Clare heads a field of the world's finest clay players this week in the 1982 D.C. National Bank Tennis Classic. See the top-ranked stars from nine countries battle in this one of the richest tournaments in the Volvo Grand Prix Super Series. The USA Cable Network brings you the semifinals Sunday and the finals live on Monday. The 1982 D.C. National Bank Tennis Classic this week on the home of the best tennis in the world, USA. He is the king of North American soccer. This week, see the sensational Giorgio Quinalia lead the New York Cosmos against the San Jose Earthquakes on USA's Wednesday night NASL soccer. The awesome Cosmos are running away with the East, while high-scoring Godfrey Ingram has the vastly improved Earthquakes challenging for the Western Division title. Don't miss the Cosmos and Earthquakes this week on USA's Wednesday night NASL soccer. Back in Buffalo, set to go in game two. The man with the shades, 32-year-old Guppy Troop. And we'll take a look at his pads later. He'll be meeting Steve Martin, who we just saw win over Art Trask. He's from Kingsport, Tennessee. And the winner of this game will go on to meet Mark Roth, who's trying to make a comeback after having tendonitis in his wrist. He's trying to do the difficult thing of shaking it off and get back into the groove that won him the Player of the Year award three years running, 77, 78, and 79. And I spoke with him earlier. Here with the three-time bowler of the year, Mark Roth. And Mark, the bowlers have had a few weeks off. You took four weeks off, actually, because of a wrist injury. What exactly did you have to do, and how did you hurt your wrist? Well, I had tendonitis, and in Los Angeles, I in and I felt the sharp pain through my wrist, and I continued to bowl, and uh, next day in qualifying, it just hurt too much. I couldn't have a ball. So I went home, went to the doctor, and they gave me some medication to take the swelling down, and they made a portable cast in my wrist. And the only way I do is just keep it immobile for a while. That's what's scary for you. It was at first, but uh, after I went back to some therapy, you know, I just took the strength in my wrist. My left wrist was 55, my right was 32, and I went out and got some weights, and I doubled strength in a week, so I felt a lot better after it was over. Do you have any doubts that you can regain the form uh, that you had when you were player of the year three times? No, not really. I've been bowling well at home. I bowled two regionals, made the finals, and uh, I've been practicing hard. I made the finals here. First week back, and uh, I feel good. I'm throwing a ball like I used to, so it's just a matter of time. And I'm going to win. You seem to live in a pretty relaxing part of New Jersey, out by the shore and so on and so forth. You must really enjoy getting there and getting off the tour and just going on the beach and just relaxing and doing nothing. I do. I used to live in New York City, and it was kind of hectic. It's, and there's people everywhere, and I just moved down the shore. It's a little quiet, especially in the wintertime when I'm home, and uh, sometimes you have to get away and just relax. Do you feel that perhaps the, the injury uh, helped you in the way that it, it forced you to take four weeks off the tour and maybe helped your attitude out? Well, it definitely helped me out. Uh, I, feel, I wanted to come back to ball. During the winter, I was kind of lazy because I just didn't like was, how I was balling. I was making money, but not the money I have been making the last couple of years. And uh, during the rest, I just relaxed, and I didn't even think about bowling. And when I started to bowl, I wanted to bowl. I know a lot of people will be watching you, Mark Roth. Good luck. Thank you, Mark. And Mark Roth waits in the wings as Guppy Troop and Steve Martin go at it in game two. Steve Martin will step up to lane number 47. What's interesting, Alan, is that Guppy Troop has his choice which lane to finish on. And he changed his mind at the last minute and decided to finish on the left lane. Well, uh, Steve Martin, who... Well, you're going to see a very unusual strike here. Steve just kind of goes through the motions with this shot. It's just soft and left of his target. The ball hooks early in the middle of the lane, hits for the nose, leaves the 310. That pin hit the other, for the pushed him out. <laughs> and you see his reaction. Here's Guppy Troop. And check out those pants. But anyway, as I was saying, Guppy... Sorry, we'll let Steve Martin finish on his favorite lane, lane 48. Starts with an excellent shot, leaves the ringing 10. Guppy's playing a little bit more outside and going a little more direct to the pocket than Steve Martin is. 
Yep, he's playing right around the 8th, 9th, 10th board in that area. And Steve is getting to there down the lane, but he's swinging a lot more. This is a funny guy who's ready if the sun does come out. Very loose player. Cross lane at the start. Say one thing about Guppy, when, when he gets it going, Alan, he's, he's all over the approach, he's running on strikes, smacking his hands. If, if he doesn't get it going, there's no reason to do that, but if he does get a string of strikes going today, you'll see Guppy moving around a little bit on those approaches. Using a blue ball to go with his red shirt and I don't know which color you call the pants. Must be about 32 different colors. Looks like a bedspread. I mean, Moving around already. He moved over two lanes to help that that one go down, striking in frame number two. Guppy's another five-star player. Free your arm swing some of the others, but see how stiff-legged he is at the finish. Again, that's not generally recommended. It's been recommended to bend a little bit more with that knee at the end. Back to Steve Martin. Swinging it out. Oh, there were several of those this week. That is what is known as the solid nine with the ball. Cuts through so sharply that it chops the five and right off of the nine. It's just finishing so hard that the pins don't offer enough deflection. Now watch the ball go through the pins here. See it, the five pin there? It chops it right straight back off the, the nine and leaving that solid nine pin. Normally the ball would hit that five and deflect into the nine. So as they say, the give it and take it the way he gets the break in the first frame for the strike and gets it right back at him in the second frame. That happens so many times on the PBA Tour. You get a break like that and they get it even with you right away. Don't ask me who they are, but... The bowling god. <laughs> solid nine, solid eight, back to back. Right now, he's saying to himself, that figures, I get that one lucky strike. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly right. what he's saying, or thinking. He's maintaining his good humor throughout his misfortune in the second and third frame. The trouble is that he could have been very easily off with a triple and up by 20 pins, and now he's down by one with the opportunity for Troop to increase that lead. He needs to keep his composure together here and make the spare. And he makes it on the left. That's Steve Martin, who finished 7th here in 1981 and 14th in 1979. Gives way to the man of color. Would that be true? He says the shades help him ignore the hot spotlights that are put up so that we can televise these events. Well, these lights are bright, and uh, some eyes are very sensitive to him, and my father, so if he wears the sunglasses and they screen it out, it works for him, then fine. One more extra time this time. And so many times I see that happen. Uh, when a bowler takes that little extra time, he has a tendency to steer the ball, not just let it go freely. Now if he steers it just a little bit left here, see the follow through go right? That usually means the ball's going left, right through the heart of the pins, leaves the 310 as a difficult spare pin. Well, it's not extremely difficult. I guess the odds are about two to one for a pro to make this. The surface on his ball is softer, and it hooks more, right? That's the idea behind it. It's a urethane bowling ball, and most of the finishes that we bowl on the lanes today are urethane, so the idea is the two adhere to one another. Oh. It's a three, two flush, and misses the spare. He's open. Gives the lead to Steve Martin while he's sitting on the bench. Shaking his head. He knew he blew an opportunity there. When your opponent gets a couple of bad breaks like that, Alan, like Steve leaves the nine pin and the eight pin, boy, you just, you want to jump on those opportunities because psychologically, there's Steve just concentrating on his next shot, not too, paying too much attention to what Guppy's doing. He's just kind of looking and thinking of what he's going to do on his next shot. Leaves the four pin, better shot. And Guppy faltering a little bit here. He averaged 212.2 .2 
over the week, which is just short of two pins better than his 1982 average. But what Guppy needs is he needs something to happen for him in a good venture uh, so he can get that adrenaline pumping, and he seems to make better shots as he gets more excited. If he's down a little bit, it's tougher to make those good shots. And he spares the fourth. He comes looking right back up that approach, so that's exactly what he needs to do. He keeps that, that body speed moving so you know you don't get down. Steve going to his favorite lane. There's Kim watching. And he got hit in the same place that he left the solid nine on. Steve Martin has certainly lined up to hit the pocket. From behind, five steps. Just in front of them, second set of dots. Push away, goes a little left. Brings that ball in close to his ankle. Big turn. Watch the ball. No deflection here. Straight through and hit the eight pin. That ball hit the eight pin. And there's Steve's reaction. <laughs> Plus 11 in the fifth. Can increase it to 21. Tie. A little soft. Just a little soft. The ball hooked early on the lane, leaving the three six. And we've mentioned that these lanes have been slick and it's led to a lot of inconsistent play. Well, they appear to be hooking a little bit more from the television show than they have all week long. Sometimes the lights have a tendency to dry the lanes out a little bit. And uh, while the lanes were extremely slick all week, I think they're moving a little bit more today. Notice how he'll move cross lane and straighten the ball out as he shoots at this spare. No hook at all. The reason for that is to cut down the possibility of chopping that spare. Steve Martin finishes in the fifth frame, up by 11 pins, leading Guppy Troop. And we'll return to continue our coverage of the $95,000 Greater Buffalo Open after these messages on USA. The High Rollers Tournament. Yes, entries are still open for the High Rollers Tournament in Las Vegas, Nevada, August 16th through 20th. It's scratch single match game competition. Win only 10 games for first prize. Now a guaranteed minimum of $210,000. Expected to climb to an unprecedented quarter of a million. Win only two games and have your $1,000 entry fee returned. For more information about the High Rollers Tournament and other spectacular prizes, call 800-257-6179. That's 800-257-6179. Enter now. Don't be shut out. Chevy's have to blow away the confusion about pickups with the new Chevy S10. Let's compare gas mileage. Toyota and Datsun can't match. S10's EPA gas mileage ratings. The imports don't offer an optional V6. S10 does. The imports can only tow 2,000 pounds. S10 can tow twice that. Compare head and leg room, and S10 beats them again. The new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. Don't miss action-packed professional boxing live from the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles at 11 p.m. Eastern on the USA Cable Network, Tuesday. He's been regarded as the greatest bowler of all time. This Saturday, see the PBA's all-time leading money winner, Earl Anthony, battle a strong field in the $100,000 Molson Bowling Challenge from Windsor, Ontario. Don't miss it at 8 p.m. Eastern on the USA Cable Network, Saturday. Watch the USA Cable Network for the bright new dimensions of USA Daytime. Start with tips and exercises to make you alive and well. Prepare your family's meals with the experts on Women's Day USA. Find insights and provocative conversations and interviews on Sonia and Are You Anybody? And sit back to enjoy vintage cinema on the USA movie and England's number one show, Coronation Street. It's the brightest new lineup on daytime TV, USA Daytime. Al Troutwick, Mike Durbin, back in Chicktawaga, New York, just outside Buffalo, where the theme here is still, we're talking proud. <laughs> it sure is. And Guppy Troop steps up onto the approach, down by 11 pins. And just to show you how inconsistent a week can be, Guppy's best game, a 278, and his lowest, a 150. Safe to say things weren't rolling right for him in that game. On the right lane, he went high here the last time. High again, rearing up at the foul line, just charging the line a little bit too much. Rearing up at that foul line, causing the ball to go left of his target, right on the nose, leaving only the 3-6. 
shaking his head. He's just not happy with the way he's performing right now. Give me an indication of how Guppy might think or what type of a sense of humor he has. All the players fill out a, a biographical sheet, and it, one of the questions is, what are your hobbies? And he filled out bowling. Well, no kidding. Beasley makes the start. Mike, he, he, he says his biggest goal in bowling is to win the, the Tournament of Champions, the Firestone Tournament of Champions, which you won. Is that greater thrill? I mean, is it, is it hey, I've finally reached the top that, that some people miss that as a, as a dream? Well, it isn't re reaching the top. It is, I think, winning the uh, major championship that we have in our sport. Uh, it is a tremendous well, I've been privileged to have that uh, experience twice, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything, but, but uh, I don't know, I like Wayne Webb's goal better. His goal is to be bowler of the decade. We see Guppy's hand position. Thumb all the way in the ball there. Hand on top of the ball. Free swing. Gives us more room. Right in there. And finally, in the sixth frame, he breaks the ice. After leaving the third open, smearing four and five. Well, so Guppy look. doesn't move the ball until he's second step in the four step and everything. The long slide. The final three goes a little bit to the right. Not much hook. Right in the pocket. Plus 13. Well, he's right in on that lane, I'll tell you. Steve's up by 13 pins at this point. Can increase it to 23 with a strike in his more difficult lane. Got a little soft here the last time we went high. Let's see if he increases the speed just a little bit. So he holds that ball down low about his waist. He has his wrist turned all the way around and then snaps it through at the end. It's high again. In fact, crosses over, leaving the 6 9 10. He's just confused on that lane right now. Either that or he's just not getting it out to his target. See that? He cut the wrist there. Watch it at the top of the ball, all the way around, twists it hard, but he's just not getting it out to his target. Left of his target almost crosses over here. Again, watch how he straightens it out now, though, at the spare. No turn at all. No doubt about that one. Looks like it was shot out of the cannon. And Guppy Troop now, trailing by 13 pins. He bowls in the seventh frame. This is the start of the summer PBA tour on the USA Cable Network. Well, this is a big shot in this game right here now for Guppy. He's gone high twice on this lane. He's down 13 pins. He needs to strike here to put some heat on Steve Martin. A little extra time again. Low room, but too much. Leaving the 258. Guppy's coming up at the line just a little bit now, and this causes him not to get the lift that he needs. Watch him now. You see, stiff-legged at the line. He doesn't get the lift, and the ball keeps sliding. He's hoping that it'll make it, but it doesn't quite come up. And he has a difficult spell here. The 258, there's just so many ways to miss this. I, I shut away every time I shoot it. Our statistician, Mark Williams, can tell you about this spell. It cost him cash in this week. Or a derivative of this spell, anyway. Shoots it from the left, and chops it. Well, you were right. So many ways to miss it. How many ways to make it? Yeah, there's some ways to make it, too, but it's it's very difficult. What a lot of people don't realize, there's 12 inches between those pins. He throws hard and straight, but the ball hooks right there and hits that two-pin flush, and it's a sick feeling. I've had it many times. Puts him down 25 pins in the match, and he's really digging himself a hole. Well, I see why he switched strategy there at the end. That, he was going to finish on that right lane, but that right lane's giving him nothing but trouble. Hasn't struck on it yet. Back solid on the left lane. Keeps his, keeps his hopes alive. Right now, Steve Martin is going at a 199 pace, and Guppy Troop is still potential 204, even though he has two opens by the seventh frame. See Guppy shaking his head in the background. 
Steve asking for his one rewrite again. Evidently, one of the pins was off spot, and he didn't like it. He's allowed that one rewrite, and he gets it without question. On his favorite lane here. See how that hand is turned around the ball? His fingers are over about 3 o'clock. Or about 9 o'clock. Fox first. Oh, he gave that way too much room. Leaving the 1, 2, 4, 7. Doing exactly what he did not want to do. He just seemed to charge the line here and rush up the whole thing. See how fast he goes up there really quick and zips it out there to the right. And the ball never bites the name. <laughs> Got all the way up to about the third board. Some of the people here thought it might be going near the channel. But he, he gets the count down to where it's almost even and has himself a very difficult spare here. The one, two, four, seven, known as the rail. Or the picket fence. You want to go right down that fence. That was a perfect one. He nailed the rail. He nailed the rail, right. <laughs> And now leads by 21 pins, moving into frame nine. Oh, breathing a sigh of relief after that one. <laughs> Going to the left lane here where he's missed the pocket the last two times. Gone high both times. Steve's a little lapse in concentration or something right now. He missed the pocket on the right lane, missed it twice here over the left. Foundation frame here. <laughs> right back in there. That's Mark of a champion. Fall off the horse, but right back on. And in front of a standing room only crowd at the throughway lanes. Steve Martin strikes in nine. See the powerful style of Steve Martin. Ball going down. And see his reaction here. He knows it. A lot of times when a bowler just gives it that fist there, he knows it's just dead flush and it's a perfect shot. We all have our little ways of reacting to when we know we throw it well and we're expecting a strike. Guppy must strike by this ball to keep himself in the match. He's still potential 2 0 4. And he gets a line hit this time. Last time he left the 2 5 8, he wasn't sure whether he was going to make it this time, but he got there. Well, he's got his tough lane out of the way. Now he's going to the lane that he's hit several times this game. He's already hit it three times this game. Eleven pins, he can cut it to one with the first strike of the tenth frame. And again, a little extra time. Very important shot for Guppy. Because this is himself exactly. Just wants to make a good shot here. Shot, came up at the line and the follow through shot dead to the right. And I was sure the ball was going to high as soon as he let it go. The pressure does that too. It's just, there's a lot of pressure. Now watch him come up at the line. Watch the follow through here now. See it shoot to the right there, very short. And the ball's left of target immediately. He almost got a roll around. And chops the six off the ten. Two chops this game. Three opens. It's just a rough game. This is the most humbling game I know. Maybe golf is more so, I don't know. Bowling's at least equal to it. Steve just needs to show up to win. And he's a winner. Even with the seven ten, he's still a winner. He's glancing up at the scoreboard. Guppy throws his rousing back down. If he had just made that six ten, he'd have still been in the match. That is not the posture of a winner right now. No, that's the agony of defeat that we see in the advertisement. All right, it is Steve Martin over Guppy Troop, who is very disappointed right now. And Steve Martin defeats him by 13 pins, 183 to 170. And we will continue on the USA Cable Network from Keek to Rogan, New York, after these messages. Back at the Buffalo Open in Cheek Durango, New York. Al traveling along with Mike Durbin. The bowling will continue in a moment, but first, Mike, let's take a look at some of the names and numbers in bowling right now. Well, and in sixth place is my doubles partner, Gil Syker, who just missed by opening in the 10th frame of the last game. Seventh is local favorite, Tom Baker. 
Well, Steve Westberg was finished eighth. President George Pappas was ninth. Bill Spagner, our image chairman, was tenth. Improving Ted Hannes was eleventh. Kyle Shedd finished twelfth. Mike Steinbeck finished thirteenth. The doubles champion, Sam Zurich, finished 14th. Pete McCordick was 15th. Steve Sparrow coming in 16th. Followed by Mark Fahey in 17th. In 18th was Sam Macaroon. The great Carmen Salvino finished 19th. He's 48 and still going. Masters champion, Joe Berardi, finished 20th. My friend, Ralph Hartman, finished 21st. Mark Baker was in 22nd. Steve Wunderlich is 23rd. And bringing up the rear was Jim Gostovich. Of course, rounds out the top 24 bowlers here at the Buffalo Open. The top five bowlers are battling for money that shapes up like this. The first place winner will cash a check for $12,000. Second place is $7,000. Third, fourth, and fifth place, very close. $5,000 third, $4,500 fourth, and fifth place will get a check for $4,000. Earlier, Mike Durbin took a step onto the approach to show us exactly that, the approach in bowling. The first thing I want to say about our series of tips on our USA Cable Network is that they are just that, a series of tips designed to give you a solid fundamental game, one that you can depend on under pressure, and one that will give you a foundation from which you can improve your average to the level of abilities that you've been given. We started this ongoing process the last time by talking about the grips. Whether it be a conventional or a semi-fingertip or a fingertip grip, that decision is up to you. The reason for that is that I believe it's absolutely essential that you have a grip that fits you. Today, we're simply going to be talking about the stance. And a very couple of simple questions that come to mind about the stance, first of all, is where do I stand on the approach? Or how far back from the foul line, whether I take a three-step delivery, four, or five-step? Well, we don't have time enough to go into both the three- and five-step delivery, so we'll talk about the four today. And the basic rule is that I put my heels to the back of the foul line, and from this position, I take four and a half brisk steps away from the foul line like so. One, two, three, four and a half. I turn, and this should give me my basic starting position for a four-step delivery. Now, I may need to make slight adjustments up a little bit or back a little bit, depending on whether I go over the foul line or finish short of it, but this should give you a pretty good idea. Now, the other very simple question that comes to mind on the stance is how do I stand here? Do I crouch way down like this, or do I put my feet way apart like this? Well, I believe that the best stance is the simplest stance. And by that I mean, if I were going to walk from this position to the foul line, I wouldn't put my body in all kinds of contortions to do it. I would simply stand here and walk right up. And that's all bowling is, is walking properly. So I believe the best stance is one that's somewhat erect, with my knees slightly flexed, not locked, and my body relaxed. Firstly, I like to have my feet together with my left foot slightly in front of my right for relaxation purposes. You may or may not like this, but I think it's absolutely essential that you have the bulk of your weight on the opposite foot that you're going to start with. Now, if I'm a right-handed bowler and I'm going to take four steps, I start with my right foot. So I put the bulk of my weight on my left. If you're left-handed, you simply turn this around. Next time, we'll deal with ball position and the first step. We'll see you then. Back at the and Mike Durbin, let's take a look right now at the top money winners so far this year. Right, we go through our top ten again, Alan. Leading the parade is Earl Anthony, who took a week off this week. In second place, we have Art Trask, who has a chance to add to that total day. Yours truly is still hanging on the third. Pete Weber, who also didn't compete this week, is in fourth place with 70000 Ted Hannes, who finished 11th in this tournament, is resting with 66000 right now. Dave Houston. Cast in this tournament is 65,000. Our Masters champion, Joe Berardi, who also made the finals in this tournament, is at 65. Steve Cook, our winner in the San Jose Open, is at 65,000. Charlie Tapp, who has yet to visit the winner's circle, is holding down ninth at 60,000. And Marshall Holman, who has yet to return to the tour, is in tenth with $47,000. And a quick recap of what happened on the spring tour as the bonus have now moved on to the summer edition of the PBA Tour. Back in the $130,000 AC Delco Classic, George Pappas, the winner, and the runner-up was Charlie Tapp. And my partner, Mike Durbin, won the Tucson Open. The runner-up was Nelson Burton, Jr. in a battle of the commentators. Tommy Hudson and Bob Hadley won two in the Seattle Open. Pete Weber and Tommy Hudson in the City of Roses Open. Kessler Open went to Steve Cook. You saw that on USA. And in the Showboat PBA Doubles Classic, Nelson Burton, Jr. and Sam Zurich were the winners. Working at one job for 21 years is special enough, but doing it on the road, that makes it even more special. 
Harry Golden, tournament director for the PBA, has been doing this for 21 years. I spoke with him earlier. One of the most familiar faces on the PBA tour is that of Harry Golden, the tournament director for 20 years. And Harry, over that time, you say to me the most frequently asked question is, are bowlers really athletes? Well, I've been asked many times, are bowlers uh, truly athletes? And unequivocally, I immediately answer yes. Uh, however, not in the sense uh, of the uh, fine conditioning it might take to be a track star, uh, and not in the sense of the hardening it might take to be a pro football player. However, during the 42 games of uh, our normal tournament, uh, a bowler will lift over five tons. He'll carry it over two miles, and he'll project it at a target 60 feet away with unerring accuracy and spin over 700 times. Now, I feel in order to do that uh, competitively, uh, he has to be some sort of an athlete. But really, what sets our guys aside from any other athletes is their ability to withstand pressure. You know, uh, tell a basketball team that the only way they can ever chalk one up in the win column is to go to one to four sudden death overtimes every time they play. Uh, you tell a golfer the only way he can win a golf tournament is to go one and four sudden death holes. Let's see how their nerves stand out. Uh, tell Reggie Jackson the next time he gets up with two on and two out in the bottom of the ninth, if he doesn't drive that run in, he's not going to get a paycheck that week. Let's see how he squeezes that bat. But our guys have to do that every week. They're definitely athletes. Harry, for 20 years you've been living on the road. I understand for the first time you've decided to buy a place to live because you've never needed it. You've been living in hotels. Are you looking forward to the day when you can get off the tour and actually live a normal life? Or are you really looking forward to staying on because you love it so much? Well, a normal life for me if through the past, actually I've completed 21 years now, uh, has been uh, life on the tour. My ties have always been here. Uh, my roots have been on the tour. But uh, last fall I married, and I now have a wife and a son who's with me now. And I do have a place to live. Uh, we're living in Venice, Florida, a very nice place on the beach. And I look forward to going back there, but I also look forward to being out here on tour. It's been my life so many years. I'm hopefully going to stay out here for a number more. Thank you, Harry Golden. My pleasure. More action from the $95,000 Buffalo Open in Chicktawaga, New York, after these messages. We move on to game three. And to the left side, Steve Martin, a winner of two games already, will be facing Mark Roth, 31 years old, who now lives in Spring Lake Heights, New Jersey and is trying to come back from a very painful case of tendonitis in his right wrist. Seems hard to believe that Mark Roth is 31 years old already. Alan, I can remember when he came out and saw him bowling as an 18-year-old. And I guess I'm just dating myself. Steve Martin's grip. Would like to forget the last game. Right in there, Mark's got to be ready. Steve Martin is. This is the best shot of the match right here, of all the matches. Very smooth. Ups the slide. Good speed. No deflection. <laughs> you can't throw the ball any better than that. Okay. He lived in New York for many years. He seems to bowl like one, Mike. We were talking about this earlier. He really is mean when he slides up to the foul line. Well, Mark's a competitor. All the players are out here. And he's out there. He's out for serious business. He wants to win. He hasn't won this year. So he wants to win. Six steps, sometimes seven. Seven this time. And leaves a solid nine pin again. Just what Steve Martin left the last game. What he wanted to do was get out with that double. See the seventh step? Well, we didn't see the first one. He chugs up there. Watch the follow through. Straight through. Watch the ball. Jumps that five right straight back up. And he looks at, oh, if looks get killed, that pin would be in trouble. 
straighten over from the spot. But he did look at my goodness. I can't believe it. Normally he throws a straight line and missed the nine pin. I know how that goes. I did that in Sarasota last year. I missed, well, we'll tell you how many single pin stars in a four game match. But I missed a few. Well, that's enough to shake him up. It certainly is. And Steve Martin going to his favorite lane up by 12 pins can increase it to 22 right away, not taking much time. No, you don't see Mark Ruff miss a single pin spot very often. I bet that's the only one he missed all week. Watch the ball. No deflection again. Perfect. Right straight through. Not much reaction from Steve. Right now he just knows, hey, I got a very tough competitor. He made a mistake. I've got to take advantage of it. That's what he's thinking. Just got that five, deflected a little bit, but enough to get that seven out of there. Down 32 pins, he needs a double here to get himself within 20. Way out of the lane, here it comes. Nice shot, great shot. Well, he has taken off that open number two frame. We'll see Martin, watch his, watch his left foot, he'll go first. Seven steps, count two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Here comes Steve. Five, and that's enough. Back in four row, keeps that lead at 32 pins. Neither one of these guys, in fact, our last three players, they were three of the top six money winners last year. Wayne Wilk. Roth and Steve Martin, and none of them have won this year. So somebody's going to break the drought. Ooh, that's the smart thing to do. You notice how he, he started to go, then he caught himself, and then somebody coughed, and he was going to go again. He thought better of it and backed off. Definitely should do that. Now he's ready. Is it room? Here it comes. Beautiful. And a 42 pin lead. Watch Steve. Five steps. High back swing. Powerful swing. Watch his reaction here. That fist up there, that means I'm tough. Steve Martin has struck through five and leads Mark Roth by 42 pins. We'll return to the Buffalo Open after these messages on the USA Cable Network. Reaching your financial goal is never as simple as some people would have you believe. You have to know exactly where you're going and make the right decisions at the right time. At Merrill Lynch, it's our skill at guiding you through the intricacies of investing that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. Dredging for oysters isn't easy, but I like it out here. There's no time clocks, traffic jams, and the air is fresher, water's cleaner. And you know, I even think the beer tastes better. Hey, looks like it's Miller time. Yeah. Miller time. Time for America's quality beer. Well, another day at the office. Miller Highlight. If you've got the time. Three Millers. Miller's got the beer. Miller beer. The USA Cable Network. 
24 hours a day of TV programs aimed to bring your family what they want when they want it. All day Monday through Friday, USA Daytime features a fresh new mix of entertainment, talk, insights, and exercise that can brighten any day at home. Then on USA, prime time means sports time, as we bring you only the best, more live major league sports than anyone. For kids, USA offers Calliope, the best children's film festival on television. And every family's late night rocker will love night flight. Late night, all night, every Friday and Saturday night. On weekends, it's kids time all morning, plus unique features from the English Channel and classics on the USA movie. Throughout the week, programs like U Magazine, Sports Look, Sports Probe, and the Wall Street Journal Late News all add up to a complete cable network that expands your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day. USA. Mark Roth certainly looking at some scary numbers up on the board, trailing by 42 pins as he's set to bowl in the fifth frame. You, you surprised how quickly he can change low hour. Mark needs to answer the challenge, though. Chugs up that line. Picks up for four times. That's down to 32. Here we see him chugging up that line. But watch him snap that follow through through. Wow. Here's the ball making a move. Watch the hip pin. Ball deflects, but the hip pin goes to the wall and does the damage. Cut it to 22 here. That's the lane he chose to finish on. Lots of luck. The solid, almost a solid shot and he gets it. What a match. Well, this is a man who's won 26 titles and he's been there before. Yeah, absolutely. And we see the replay. Solid in the pocket. Steve Martin going to his favorite lane now. Can't let up. Watch the two pin, goes to the wall, comes back, and that's the seven pin now. It's the one that's going to get that four, and it just notches. There it goes. <laughs> Boy, that was amazing. See, it's usually the two pin that gets that four, and it was actually the seven pin that time we did. See if you can take advantage of it. You sure did. I'll tell you what, Alan, our viewers at home watching this USA cable telecast don't like this game. They might as well shut the set, set off right now because this is professional bowling its best. It's not going to get any better than this. Mark Roth down by 42. Here it comes. And so where we're going right now is Mark Roth is still potential to 68. And there's an old adage by Fred Wolf years ago, if you can do it with a, a pencil, you can do it with a bowling ball. I guess that was one of the high games of the week, the 268. Steve Martin right now is got seven in a row. That's in the 250 category right now. So it's still up for, up for grabs. Here it comes. It's right there. And gets the right one again. Well, the big, you know, they can still have all of them that Mark Roth has carried that solid line for. You see the chunking steps of Mark Roth and that right hit again. Watch the head bang. Go to the wall. Those pins just dance to get up. See if Steve can answer the challenge. He's there. He's there. Up. It was right here, it was right here that Joe Berardi bowled the last 300 game on television. There's the solid hit of Steve Martin and the arm raised. Ninth frame. This is the more difficult lane. He's probably not making it even more too difficult this game. Not much time. 
Amazing, his composure for only 23. It's there. Well, oh, my, didn't get the lift. Leaving the 2-8. And this match is very much up to grabs, and he needs to get all of his concentration together to make this spare. He makes the spare. He's going at a 268 clip, and Mark Ruff can strike out for 268. Great bowling fans in Buffalo, and they are loving it. Oh, they certainly are. Let's see. He's got a great shot. Great shot. Well, Mark has still got a chance. 30 pins down right at this point. Interestingly, Mark Roth averaged seven pins higher than Steve Martin this week. Right now, they are playing very close. He's got to have this one out. He's got to have this one. Sends it out. Here it comes. And carries it. Can't open it. That makes it 20. What a finish this is going to be. Seven steps. That's the follow through. Straight to it. The ball will deflect. Now watch it. It'll split the five six. Just like that. The three time PBA player of the year in the 10th frame. Down by 20, can cut it to 10. There it is. Perfect. Perfect. Woo. This one puts him in the 260s, Alan. He's in the 250s right now. Steve Martin already needs a mark to win. This one puts him in the 260s. Steve's Steve just concentrating on what he wants to do. He's finishing on his favorite lane. He doesn't want to look. Well, I wouldn't need it, would you? Nope. And what could Wayne Webb be thinking seeing these two guys bowl this way? A little high, oh, and a bad count. Gets that one out of there, leading the 3 6 10. With the start, it's 255. Closing Martin to Mark. Mark Ruff checking the scoreboard. He had tossed eight strikes, and now in the 10th frame. Just great bowling. Tremendous bowling. Straight at this one. Makes that. Mark Ruff finishes with a 255, trailing by 13 pins to Steve Martin, who now steps on the approach. He needs nine pins on the first ball. Nine pins, and he's a winner. Too many things happening. People saying, shh, he heard the ball hit the, the uh, rolling back on the ball return there, and it hit the other ball. And just too many things happening. Again, he did the wise thing. It's no easy chore stopping a 16-pound weight once it's moving forward. Needs nine. And that's ten. Wayne Webb, look out. Can't throw it any better under pressure than this. Almost leaves a solid seven, but it doesn't matter. And there's the reaction. Oh, how good it feels. And he leaves the same three that Mark Rock left. He'll be in the 260s. Steve Martin, he's been a PBA member for six years, and over the course of those six years, he's only won five times. And he would certainly love to match it up with a six. A he six. certainly would. Another way to look at it, he's only 23 and has won five titles already. So. I didn't win my first one until I was 25. Steve Martin, 13 pins over Mark Roth, 268 to 255, and to the cheers of the crowd of Blue Ray Lanes. He gets set to battle Wayne Webb for the championship at the Buffalo Open. We'll be back for this dramatic confrontation after this. Chevy's out to blow away the confusion about pickups with the new size Chevy S10 with available V6 power the imports don't have. 
Chevy S10. V6 power to tow twice as much as any foreign import pickup. Carries heavier payloads than many standard full-size pickups. V6 power with gas mileage ratings even the best-selling four-cylinder import when equipped with a five-speed transmission can't beat. Chevy S10. It's the hottest-selling new truck in America. There's never been a truck like it before. It's the High Rollers Tournament. Yes, entries are still open for the High Rollers Tournament in Las Vegas, Nevada, August 16th through 20th. It's scratch single match game competition. Win only 10 games for first prize. Now a guaranteed minimum of $210,000. Expected to climb to an unprecedented quarter of a million. Win only two games and have your $1,000 entry fee returned. For more information about the High Rollers Tournament and other spectacular prizes, call 800-257-6179. That's 800-257-6179. Enter now. Don't be shut out. Defending champion Jose Luis Clare heads a field of the world's finest clay players this week in the 1982 D.C. National Bank Tennis Classic. See the top-ranked stars from nine countries battle in this one of the richest tournaments in the Volvo Grand Prix Super Series. The USA Cable Network brings you the semifinals Sunday and the finals live on Monday. The 1982 D.C. National Bank Tennis Classic this week on the home of the best tennis in the world, USA. He is the king of North American soccer. This week, see the sensational Giorgio Quinalia lead the New York Cosmos against the San Jose Earthquakes on USA's Wednesday night NASL soccer. The awesome Cosmos are running away with the East, while high-scoring Godfrey Ingram has the vastly improved Earthquakes challenging for the Western Division title. Don't miss the Cosmos and Earthquakes this week on USA's Wednesday night NASL soccer. It's been a long time since Wayne Webb has been in the winner's column. 15 months, but this 24-year-old bowler from Indianapolis thinks that he's got it back, and he hopes that he's got the eye of the tiger, and he'll beat it to face Steve Martin, who just came off a very exciting victory over Mark Roth by 13 pins. Earlier, I had a chance to speak with Wayne Webb, and it just came to mind that he was very, very confident after having that, that long, long draft back over. Well, Wayne Webb is a very confident player. He doesn't lack for confidence in his ability. So the crowd is settling in, waiting for Wayne Webb to battle Steve Martin. And here's my chat with Wayne. 24-year-old Wayne Webb is in the top spot here at the Buffalo Open, but it's been a long drought for you, Wayne. 15 months. That must be a long, long time. 15 months starts to get to you. you know, I've, I've made a few telecasts in the last you know, doing that 15 months, and I haven't been able to win. It just seems like I've been getting some bad breaks, and uh, it's been a long time. I think this week I get a good shot at it. It must be difficult. Uh, a long time like that, you've got advice, I would imagine, coming from all different directions. Everybody feeling that they want to help you out. Yeah, I've had some advice. I think I lost a lot of the killer in me, and now I've got the eye of the tiger. I'm just out there. I'm trying so much harder now, and uh, my confidence is back was something I think I've lost in the last year. And this week, I just, I had a lot of confidence. I worked real hard. Now, you say the eye of the tiger is something that Rocky had to get back to. What is it that deep inside a bowler that it takes to win? I think, you know, you start to lose a little confidence. The breaks start getting real bad, and it starts getting to, uh, you know, you start saying to yourself, so, you know, so what's new? And you just start losing a little of that confidence, and it doesn't mean quite as much as what it should. So I started working a little harder on just my mind. I saw the movie three times because it, it, it stressed it so much. And it made me realize what I needed to do to win. And I think now I've got it. And I think that I've got a good chance of winning this week. Did you have an Apollo Creed, someone that pointed it out to you? Yeah, my father. You know, my father mentioned that I just wasn't trying hard enough. It didn't mean enough to me anymore. And he told me to to start working a little harder and be like I was two years ago when I was born real well. I wanted it real bad because I'd never had it before. And that's the way I feel now. It's been 15 months since I've had it, and I want it that much worse now because I haven't had it in so long. How does a young bowler like yourself lose that, that drive and that desire? You seem so young to have lost it so quickly. Well, I'd won a lot in a couple of years, and with the breaks going so bad for me, I say, well, you know, next time I make the show or next week, we'll get them back. But I found out you can't think that way. Don't look to next week because this week is the week that, that you're there and it's the week you got to make the money. And 
this is where kind of game in the drive back. It says, don't worry about next week. Don't worry about this week. Well, you're one game away from breaking the slump. Good luck. Thank you. Wayne Webb shakes hands with Steve Martin, and will the eye of the tiger be enough? And right out of the gate, Wayne Webb wants a re rack on the left lane. So he's used up his one re rack in the first frame. Interestingly, his average over the week was less than that of Mark Roth, but he finished on top with a match record of 15 8 1. And he's chosen to finish on the right lane, which has been Steve Martin's good lane the entire three games so far. We'll see if that strategy prevails for him in the end of the match. 24 year old Wayne Webb. How much time again? That's the way to start. Steve Martin didn't take any practice shots during the break between the two games, although he didn't the game before that either. So he's had 20 strikes in the three games so far, averaging 225. It's right there, and leaves the fourth man just a hair tight. Now sometimes what may happen, I don't say this will in the kind of match, but a after you've had a lot of strikes like that, suddenly you start getting tapped. See that powerful style? This time, the ball breaks just a little sharp and wants the two pin. Goes to the wall and doesn't get the four. Remember, he got the break with that seven pin hit the four the last time. The 268 that he had to beat Mark Roth was his best score of the week. Well, that's the time to do it. <laughs> Converts the four pin easily. Sounds you hear the ball return and perhaps the blower. And sometimes you can hear the pins falling into the chutes in the back. They all seem to be in there right now. It's very quiet. Here it comes. And there it is, solid. Not much reaction from him. It's early in the match. Wayne knows that he's got a player that's lined up on both lanes and he's going to have to build a good score in order to win this match. Notice how up in front of the 12 foot line, he takes five steps, holds the ball down with one hand, kind of bumps it up to start, and then rocks into his approach. Fingers of steel, they show him. Left of target and four sixes right away. Paid the full penalty. Seen in front of the 12 foot line, one hand, rocks into it, bent knee, slide, pretty stiff leg at the end. And he just goes for the one and leaves the second frame open. And now trails by 12 pins. And the 1979 winner of this event is going to turn it around in the third frame. It certainly does. Wayne Laney struck out in the first frame. Not much time again. Sends it out. Here it comes. Solid. Almost leaves it 10, but it falls over. Steve Martin is asking for a rebound. He's up by 12. When you're in a match like this, you can jump out ahead quick. We see Wayne style again. Powerful ball. Let's see that finish here. Really biting on the And six just gets the 10. Just tapped it over. That's all it's got to do. Steve on his good lane can take a 22 pin lead with a strike here. Very solid at the line. And trips up four out of there. First frame, the two pin didn't do it. This time it did do it. That's very interesting strikes. Watch the high backswing. A powerful turn. And again, watch that two pin, the second one from the head pin, one on the left there. It goes to the wall this time and gets the four. Billy Hardy was the famous tripper of the four of all time, I think. Can make it 32. And does. Beautiful. Left hand up. Way well, better strike on this ball right now, Alan. Or this match could be over in a hurry. He's 32 down. And Steve Martin <laughs> wants to win. Again, even 
3-6. Interesting, he picked a finish on that ring. Ball hooked early on him twice in a row now. Changes balls to shoot the spot. Going to a greener ball, but one that goes straighter. He's known as the green machine. done very well here. First in 79, third in 81, 12th in 78, 13th in 1980, so he's always been in the top 24. Likes his son. And leaves another, our third solid nine of the day. Today's modern pin with two voids in it doesn't offer a lot of resistance to the powerful bowling balls we have. Cross lane at the ninth room. We see Mark Ross missed this and cost him the match. Against Steve Martin. Wayne converts it. So, Wayne Webb spares in the fifth frame, but he does trail Steve Martin by 33 pins. By the way, these bowlers are battling for something other than money right here. Chevrolet will award the use of an S10 truck for one year to the bowler who fares the best overall in the 15 PBA tournaments carried by USA. Chevrolet S10, there's never been a truck like it before. We'll be right back in Buffalo, New York. Deacon's my name and Bowling's my game. Get up, get up. Come on, three strikes and you're out. Look, we just won another round of light beer from Miller. Yeah, right, sure tastes great. Let's go! Tastes great! Now, Miller! Hold on! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Oh, there it is down there. Take your time. Eight ball in the pocket. Bubba, this ball doesn't have any holes in it. Yeah, it does. The score's all even! Last frame, who's up? Rodney. Rodney! Oh. Gotta be a mistake. Hey, are you kidding? It's a piece of cake. <laughs> All we need is one pin, Rodney. <laughs> Big deal for Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer, and less. I didn't get my turn yet. I'm gonna break this time. Tonight, on USA's Night Flight, take a surrealistic trip through your mind with anti clock and catch Night Flight interview with John Cougar on USA Tonight. This week in Game 1 of USA's Thursday Night Baseball doubleheader, it's a key battle in the National League East. See slugging Gary Carter lead the Montreal Expos against hard-hitting Keith Hernandez and the high-flying St. Louis Cardinals. Then, immediately following Sports Pro, baseball's top thief, Ricky Henderson leads the Oakland A's against rookie sensation Ken Herbeck and the Minnesota Twins. Don't miss live Thursday Night Baseball this week on USA. May not be seen in some areas. He's been regarded as the greatest bowler of all time. This Saturday, see the PBA's all-time leading money winner, Earl Anthony, battle a strong field in the $100,000 Molson Bowling Challenge from Windsor, Ontario. Don't miss it at 8 p.m. Eastern on the USA Cable Network, Saturday. We're looking at Harry Golden, the tournament director here, and all over the country, and looking over his shoulder is Steve Martin. They're trying to make sure that the pins are the way that they should be. But what has happened is Steve used up his single rewrite that he gets <clears throat> early in the game, and he, this is the second one. He's had two in this frame that Harry Golden has given him. So he makes three for the game already. We're only in the fifth frame. Can increase it to 43 pins with a strike on his good lane. He needs to keep the speed up on this right lane. And he certainly does. What a great shot. Really good looking in there. Boy, didn't come back? He had nine strikes in his win over Mark Roth, and now he has struck in four of the first five frames. Watch his fellow through. Snaps straight through. But he really gets out about the sixth board, and now it charges. Wow. So the more he was look at that and be green with envy. It's all the more chancy when you remember how close he came to dumping in the channel before. 
Martin up by 43. Make it 53, John Ty leading the 310. Didn't get it out to his target that time, a little soft. Let's see how he shoots this ball. What I guess he will do is move left, straighten out the hand release so he doesn't turn it and throw hard. Try and get the ball to deflect off the three into the 10. So he breaks the wrist there. No turn. And no conversion. That changes the complexion of things. Well, it keeps Wayne Webb in the match. Instead of being down by 43 to start this frame, he's down by only 29. But he needs to get his act together right now. He's been high twice on this right lane. Locks into it. Good luck. Trips the four and leaves the nine. Solid nine in the fifth frame. Trips the four and leaves the nine here. And I didn't do it. And, and, and then deal with, with some of these other problems later? Or are you just saying bad. this plan should be completely well, It's up to you as to study, uh, to decide. Uh, normally we will tell what we think about the plan. And at the same time, what's going to happen in whole Balkans? Because this is the first step. uses it and then he switch back and he hold it with two hands. He goes back and forth, but this is his primary style. Holds it down with one hand, kicks it out. Now he's still 10 out of it. Great shot there. That's up to Steve Martin, who has defeated. See, you look at the replay. Take it out here, five steps. Stiff leg at the end, but fingers of steel. See that six pin, nudge that ten on it? That means you had good roll on that ball, good lift from the fingers. And here comes Steve on his favorite lane. And the seventh pin to put it away. Steve Martin, who has defeated Guppy True by 13 with a 183 game. Uh, Trask with a 226 by 16 pins. And Mark Roth with a 268 by 13 pins. And right now he's going at a 216 clip. And Wayne Webb is going at 186. So he can raise his lead to 40 pins and put himself in the 220s with a strike here. Is this for more room? And here it comes, leaving the 10 pin. It wasn't really a weak 10. The ball was coming in so hard and such a sharp angle behind the 10, behind the pocket, though, that it leaves the 10 pin. We get a chance to see it here. Pushes that ball up. Solid at the line. Very good balance. See it come back late, and the 6 pin just couldn't get up to get it. Just too much of an angle. Flattens that wrist out now. Straight at the spare. And converts it. A little more room for the audience, but he had it all the way. Spares the eight and still leads by 30, as one of these two gentlemen will win their first tournament of 82. And you see Wayne Webb give his ball a little peck on the cheek to give it a little good luck. And if Wayne Webb wants to win, his first tournament in 15 months, he's got a strike on this right lane, this ball. He certainly threw it well, his best shot of the match on the question, cutting it to 20. Watch the good left here. Great fingers in this ball. ball skits on the lane, now it starts to bite right around here. Solid in the pocket. Let's see his reaction. Gives that a little fist earlier. This one is just as important. He's in the 190s now. This one puts him in the 2-0s with a potential of 226. He's low, and carries up 10. A little, a little more of a reaction there. Now it's much, much closer. 10 pins. Steve Martin, who once led by 43. And Steve is on his good lane. The count is even right now, six to six. He wants to keep it that way, so he needs that strike here. And somebody yelled right as he let it go. Come on, Steve, and he goes high. Our tournament director, Harry Golden, cautions the audience not to do that until they've let the ball go. That can be very expensive for Steve Martin. And he knows it. It just goes a little bit high here. He breaks up the split, which would have been disastrous. He's still leading by eight pins. Needs to make the spare. 
into four seconds, converts it easily. Now in a situation right now, Steve Martin is going to 214 flip right now. He can strike out with all three in the tent for 224. But Wayne Webb can strike out for 226. So Wayne Webb's destiny is in his own hands, so to speak. Steve wants to put as much pressure on him as he can. There's a $5,000 difference between first and second place. Plus the win. Plus the win. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, that's just impressive. Under that pressure to throw that perfect shot. Watch him here. Watch his head. Look, he's looking at that target. It never moved. Now watch the ball. 17th board is solid in the pocket. That was dead on board 17. Oh, he took a deep breath there, saying, thank goodness. Right, this one's just as important. This puts him in the 220s here. Forces Webb to get two in the 10th. <laughs> Looks good. Oh, just, that was even better. Even better. With a strike here, Steve Martin force Wayne Webb to get two strikes and nine to win. We could have a tie. It's still possible to have a tie. And as so many bowlers do or don't do, really, they don't look. It doesn't help any. Uh, no. His wife. There's Kim. Suffering more than Steve is, probably. Right there again. Perfect. What a finish. Gets a little five slap from Steve Martin. Wayne Webb has got to do it now. Wayne Webb is an excellent clutch forward. I've watched him throw a lot of strikes when he needs them. I've seen him leave some solid 10 pins, though, in this exact same situation. He needs two strikes and nine pins. Got to take them one at a time. And here's his first one. Must have this one. He's looking. I will do it. Gracious is solid, 4.79, and Steve Martin is the winner. Look at Steve Martin in the back saying, I can't believe it. He's done it. It's close to 19.82. And Wayne Webb, who said the eye of the Tiger would pull it off for him. It just wasn't enough. Great left. He's running it out. He thinks it's solid in the pocket. Watch the two-pin fly right over the 4.7. And I'll tell you, that, that showed you a little bit about the character of Wayne Webb to go ahead and make that split when it doesn't matter, I think it takes a lot of character on the young man. Well, you saw that little interview we did. Wayne obviously wanted this one badly, and you don't have to look too hard at him to know how disappointed he is. And there's the one he wanted, the solid 10 this time. Steve Martin is your champion. Wayne Webb, 202. And how about this 23-year-old from Kingsport, Tennessee? In four games, he had 28 strikes. He started at the bottom and pulled it up. And he is just shaking hands with just about everybody. Everybody is on their feet here. And let me tell you, there is no room for another person here. Alan, I've only seen this a couple other times that happened. After Larry Long in the Kansas City Open one time, and now for Steve Martin here. So Steve Martin, who was a daddy already and will be a daddy again in November, has some very well-timed money for all the new clothes he's going to have to buy. We'll return to present the check and the trophy to Steve Martin on the USA Cable Network after these commercial messages. out to blow away the confusion about pickups with the new Chevy S10. Let's compare mileage. Ford's late entry small truck can't beat. S10 ZPA gas mileage ratings. They don't offer an optional V6. S10 does. Ford can tow only 3,300 pounds. S10 can tow 4,000 pounds. Compare cargo box size. And S10 is longer and wider. The new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of... Hey, whoa! Camp's back there. Guys, after three days of nothing to fish, I look for changes in the menu. It's our last night. So it's my fault. Uh, 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 Alright, so where are we going? I know a guy down here that serves up a really good steak. And a terrific...
terrific Lohenbrau. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be Lohenbrau. You guys having a luck today? Uh, Not for now. Let it be Lohenbrau. How would you like a new home at the same address? Well, now you don't need to take drastic action. Because you can get your house just the way you want it. With the Down to Brass Tax Home Magazine, Homeowner's How To. It can tell you how to turn your kitchen from almost to perfect. How to heat your home without getting burned. How to remodel your bath without having to take one. Homeowner's How To makes it easy with photos, diagrams, plans. You save time, you save money, and you add thousands to the value of your home. And if you subscribe now, you'll even receive this free gift. Help, the homeowner's easy living planner. Help gives you the answers to questions. Like how to keep the heat you buy. Even how to house train a wet basement. Call 1-800-345-8505 and you'll receive nine issues of Homeowner's How To for just $9.97. Plus help, absolutely free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-345-8505. Call now for your free gift and... Homeowner's How To. It's the best little investment you can make in your home. Call 1-800-345-8505 now. Back in Buffalo, New York, a very happy moment for Steve Martin of Kingsport, Tennessee. And as uh, the other Steve Martin might say, you could have done it easily, but no, you had to do it the hard way. Very exciting, Steve Martin. And here to present a trophy to you is Mr. Phil Cantonese, the Vice President of Bell's Markets, a local sponsor here in Buffalo. Steve, on behalf of the people of Western New York and Bell Supermarkets, we'd like to present this trophy for your outstanding performance tonight's match. Steve, congratulations. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? On behalf of Thruway Lanes, Bell's Markets, Western New York, congratulations. Thank you. I'd like to thank you. Uh, I know what you are. So. I'd like to thank everybody in, everybody in the great city of Buffalo and here at Thruway Lanes. You guys got to be the greatest fans of anywhere we've been. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dolan. Mike Durbin, he had some very creative ways to win, didn't he? He certainly did. Uh, Steve, I want to offer my congratulations on one of the greatest four games that I've ever seen. I have a, a couple questions for you. First of all, last year uh, you were in the top six of the money winners. You made over $80,000. This year it was only $24,000 coming into uh, this week. First of all, how come only $24,000 and what turned it around for you? Well, at the start of the year, I started off good, and then I seemed like every week I started getting a few bad breaks, and I said to myself, well, it'll come, it'll come. It never did come. So, uh, after the spring tour, I decided if you want to hear these applause again, you're going to have to work on it, buddy. And uh, I started trying to get myself in a little bit better shape in my game. I practiced uh, every day, 14 straight days, about two, three hours a day, and it's finally coming back around a little bit by a little bit. Did you ever have a more exciting match than that one with Mark Rock? No, I, that's another person I believe is back, too. Yeah, I think you're right, though. Congratulations again, Steve. <laughs> Let me just ask you a question, Kim. You came walking right out of here so quick, and the first thing you wanted was that check for $12,000. Now, you have a, a, another youngster coming on the way. I get, you you want to hold the microphone for mom? <laughs> you have another youngster coming. This is a well-timed win, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. We're really proud of him. And were you, were you real nervous? The money. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Was it? Were you real nervous? I'm always nervous. Everybody says I look calm on TV, but I'm not. Underneath, I'm not. <laughs> well, that trophy is almost as big as you are. Thank you very much. Steve Martin, congratulations. Folks, was he great? Steve, you can 
take your trophy and your check, and thanks very much. We're going to, Kim, why don't you step aside? We're going to show Steve one of his last strikes. Thank you. Mike, let's take a look at one of the last strikes now in that, uh, that championship game for Steve Martin. And Steve, if you can just look down at the monitor that we have here and relive this, uh, this interesting finish. I was nervous. <laughs> I didn't think I threw him that good in the tent. Uh, I got disturbed a little bit in the ninth frame, and I knew I needed to strike everyone in the tenth frame to make Wayne uh, get the first two. I, th I thought he would too. Wow, the best shot I made in ten years. <laughs> ten years? You were back in the junior leagues then. <laughs> Let me ask you: You saved your best game for the final five. Is that the type of player you are? No, I'll take them whenever I can get them. But uh, that's it. I needed it that game. That's for sure. I'm glad I got it there. The rest of the season, are you thinking that the rest of the bowlers had better be wary? Well, I'm going I'm to do my best. That's all. I'm just going to do my best, try to win another one this year and uh, get myself back in shape and uh, try to make something out of a lousy year. You've got six of these trophies now for PBA titles. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you again. Okay, Steve Moore, $12,000 and a big trophy. Steve, you've got your wife. Thank you very much. And you can carry that away, can you? Thank you, Steve. Mike Durbin, it seems as though the couple of weeks that the bowlers had to get their their act together, uh, so to speak, worked for some and not for others. Well, it certainly worked. I think it worked for most everyone. Uh, as Steve Martin commented, I think Mark Roth is back for sure. He, he told us after he finished that his wrist felt great. Um, I think the reason that he hasn't been on as many shows as, as we've seen lately is because of that wrist. Steve Martin showed that he's back. You know, he's had somewhat of a sore wrist also. I don't think the wrist bothered him at all today, and I think uh, the rest of us better look out the rest of the summer and fall. Okay, we thank you all at the Thruway Lanes. You've been some great fans. We thank you for watching at home on the USA Cable Network. For Mike Durbin, I'm Al Troutwick. We'll see you next Saturday. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.